Oh, hay fever. Is the Anderson charger so expensive? It's advertised as a premium charger, obviously. Uh, you can change the front cover and the back of it to suit whatever you want. The cable does hide, which is the only charger with a tethered cable where you can actually hide the entire cable. So that's really cool, and I'll show you that later. Today's install is on a mid terraced house with a driveway. And there's a few important checks that you need to make to ensure that the installation is suitable for an EV charger. One thing that's very common in terraced housing is something called loop supplies. Fortunately, this house doesn't have it, but I'll explain to you what it is. So what we have here is the incoming cable, which goes into the existing cutout. On a loop supply, what you would see is potentially another cable coming out of here and it will loop straight through to the neighbor's cutout feeding that. Other things to check is to make sure that the gas is bonded and the water bonded, which I've checked, but it's not here. We're gonna install a separate consumer unit here today. Lift up this flooring. I'm gonna drill a hole down at an angle here, which will hopefully get me underneath the suspended flooring where I can fish my cable through to the consumer unit. And we're gonna run the cable up in the porch, and then we're gonna drill through here, which will get me out of the porch. And we're gonna clip the cable right tight underneath this to the EV charging position there. And that's where the Anderson is gonna be sat. So first things first, lift the floor. So I'm quite methodical in the way that I work. The first thing I do is make sure that I can get my cable from point A to point B. That's the most important part. There's no point doing the rest of the job otherwise. And I like to use my trusty 240 Makita drill for that. The battery drills just don't cut as far as I'm concerned. I've looked at some of the Deere and Makita battery drills, but I need like a 40 amp battery and they cost like a million pounds, so I'm just not buying it. This drill will do. Now for a big hole. I need to get myself some new rods, really. Just look at them, they're all knackered. That is the absolute worst bit done. Celebration biscuit. These are the D-Line EV Ultra cable clips I'm gonna be using today. They've just got like a wrap around feature, they're really, really good. And I'll be using self-tapping D-Line screws that come in the boxes with it. So the next thing I do of my methodical process is get all my EV Ultra cable clips in place. Then I can run the cable around and clip it up as I go. Nice and easy. It's all in the prep. So I set up my laser there. And as you can see, up the wall, I've got a nice straight line. This sort of pebble dash wall is a nightmare to drill into, so don't use a spit gun, it will just shatter it. It can be a bit of a pain to fix into, but we'll see how we get on. is that I'm using this Makita combi drill to drill into the brickwork. There's a couple of reasons for this. And this is a message out to that hater who always posts on my social media, why are you using a, a combi drill instead of a, an SDS drill? Well, the reason is because I want to. And the reason I'm not using the spit gun on this one is because this is like a facing wall in the front of the house and I just don't want to splinter it. So I'd rather be safe than sorry, just drill it. It takes a little bit longer, but it's worth it. <laughs> So these are the D-Line EV Ultra cable clips. I've been using these for ages now and they're absolutely brilliant. I know there's other variations of EV cable clips on the market, but I found these to be the best and they come in a box. You can get like a box of 100 and they've got these self-tapping fixings and they bite into the brickwork really well. All you need to do is use a combi drill or an SDS with a five mil drill bit, do your like pilot hole basically, and then wang them in the wall. So you may or may not have noticed that I didn't make a lot of YouTube videos over winter. 
I knocked it on the head for a little bit. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, I'll be honest, I was disheartened with how hard YouTube is to gain subscribers. Um, I didn't realize how hard it was. I've been doing this for a year now and it's really hard to build that following up. So do me an absolute belting favor and just hit that subscribe button for me. And the other reason was I was using like a proper camera to do this filming. And you may have noticed how wet it was over the winter and my camera was just getting wrecked basically. So I turned to just using my phone and doing loads of short videos, which I posted loads of those because I wasn't so concerned. My phone's waterproof, so it didn't really matter. But I'm back and I want to make these videos the best I possibly can for you. I'm installing far greater range of EV chargers now. So loads for you to see. And also I'm doing work on general electrical installs as well. So just so it doesn't get too boring for you. So I'm going to stop with the cable clips there. The charger's getting mounted here. I don't know what route I'm going to take with the cable yet. So we're going to get the cable out, get that ran from here to the consumer unit, and we'll go from there. Cup of tea number two. I would like to also introduce you to my new apprentice for the day. What a beaut. This is Vincent the vacuum. You can see he's, he's lost a wheel. If you haven't seen one of these cable rollers before, it's called a Rumpo Tech. It's absolutely mustard. Works really well, if you've got a broken drum, doesn't matter. Rumpo Tech, sorted. But after passing that cable through that hole there, you find that it gets a bit of brick dust on it, so just make the effort, grab a couple of wipes, wipe the cable around before you clip it up and over. Big wipe juice in my eye. So the way these D-line clips work is a really easy one. I'll just show you now quick. So the cable just sits in there like that, fold that one over, and you've got three little holes there so it accommodates variation of size of cables. But this one I'll just put in the end one like that, fold it over, job done. Onto the consumer unit, glass water. Inside this consumer unit, what we have is we have the B40 RCBO, 32 amp for the surge, surge protection module, 100 amp switch, EV ultra cable, ferrelled up, ready to be terminated. So the Anderson comes in about a million different bits. Here's the front cover, which we're going to leave in here, side panels. And there's the charging cable. Inside this packaging, you get all sorts of things. You get the bottom cover, and you get all these IP rated covers. And they're to go on the terminal covers for the charger, cable, my terminations, and something else. And this is a screw kit pack that you get with a million screws in it. But one annoying thing is that I've had it delivered and I haven't got my CT with it. So I'm gonna to have to come back to install that now next week. But what I will do is I'll take advantage of that and I will create a YouTube video on how to commission and use the Anderson app. So if you wanna see that, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> So normally when I get to this stage, I've got my cables ferrelled up, they're prepared at the other end. It's time for testing, but not with the Anderson. Now we need to attach the charging cable. A little tip for you, make sure you do this stuffing gland up first before you put it in here, because if you try and do your stuffing gland up there, you're never gonna do it. You just nip that up and then you can nip this one up after. Leave gland on and those cables terminated. I'm gonna get on my dead testing, my live testing of my actual cable. Then I'll put the rest of the thing back together and then we'll test through the unit. One thing I am gonna snag though, for a unit that's so well built. And don't get me wrong, it is built very well. And aesthetically, as you'll see in the end, it is lovely. But what I don't understand is why are these crappy plastic terminals? I think they could definitely be a lot better. Compared to the Zappy terminals or the Hypervolt, these aren't quite there. <laughs> My customer today has been an absolute legend and he's just bought me out a rocket lolly. So a few things to note about the Anderson EV is that let's start with price. You are looking at about £1,200 for basic model and then you can pay a premium of another £200 if you want a different one of the upgraded covers and then you also need to buy the CT clamp separately. So all in all, it's a very expensive charger compared to the Zappi and the Hypervolt and even some lower range ones. So with regards to what you actually get for your money is you do get a very well built charger, without a doubt. You do get the only charger on the market where you can hide the cable completely. It comes in a five and a half, 
or an eight meter tethered cable. It's either five and eight or five and a half and eight and a half. I can't remember exactly. You do get to customize it, which you don't get to do with the less premium chargers, apart from like the Zappi, you can choose between a white or a black cover, for example, but that's as far as the customization goes with that. From an installer point of view, you need to make sure that you allow a little bit more time for this because it does come in a million bits and it does take quite a while to build the thing. Anderson customer service is brilliant. So if that is a concern of yours, then Anderson, you will get a really good service on that side of things. With regards to what you get technically in comparison to the Zappi or the Hypervolt, it's not a lot. This does integrate with solar, not as well as a Zappi. Like the Zappi, you have more control. You have three charging modes, but this you don't have that. But it will operate and work with the solar. The Anderson app, it's good, it's fine. But with regards to what it actually does, it's just another seven kilowatt charger. So you are just paying for really a good build and what it looks like and the ability to customize it to your preference. So now I'm at a stage where I'm going to put the sides on, then put the bottom on, then put the top on, and then I'll put the front cover on. So these side panels, they just clip in like that, nice and easy, and then just nip up these two just to hold the side panel in place. And then get yourself another million screws and button that up. Next, thing, fitting the lid. So the other thing to bear in mind with the Anderson is that it is a big charger. Now my customer has walked out and he was quite surprised at how big this thing is. So if you compare that to other chargers on the market that have targeted the discrete sort of look, Anderson have gone the other way. Gone, we are gonna put the biggest, loudest charger that we can make on the market. So if you're thinking about getting an Anderson charger, make sure you like looking at it. So what we've got here is we've got the black surround and we have the Malvern, I think Malvern, Malvern, Malvern blue front cover, which we'll see in a bit. Very nice. All right, lid done. And now we have the piece de la resistance, the cover. Got to be super careful with this. Do not want to scratch the fact I'm even going to wipe my hands. The way you put this on is it literally drops in. So there we have it, there is the Anderson EV charger. So what are you paying for? Well, look at it, it's beautiful. Without a doubt, it's the best looking charger on the market, best built, reliable. If you're looking for something that is very aesthetically pleasing on the front of your house and you don't mind a massive charger, get an Anderson.